In this video, I will show you how to randomize any animation you have created inside MoGraph by randomizing the weights of the clones. This relies on a technique called Weight Transform and is one of MoGraph's not so obvious but very powerful workflows. In a few words, it allows us to randomize the weights of the clones using a random effector so that any linear animation will become in turn random-ish. Let's make a MoGraph setup and see how this technique works. Let's create a cube, make it 20 by 20 by 20. MoGraph, cloner, make the cube a child of the cloner. Select the cloner, let's go to the object tab. Set the mode to grid array, make this 11 and 1 and 11. And we have these beautifully adjacent cubes. Fantastic. Now with the cloner selected, I'm going to go to MoGraph Effector and let's add a plane effector. And you can see everything moved up because the value is 100 in the Y. Let's go to the fall off. Let's add a linear fall off. Make sure that the fall off is set to 100% and the orientation is plus X. Fantastic. So here we have a nice little stepping effect. Now what I want to do is make an animation out of this. So I'm going to set my effector over here, select it, go to coordinates and add a keyframe right there. At frame 0, go to frame 80 and add the same value as a keyframe. So it will return to the original position. Go to frame 40, which is right in the middle, and move this to the right and click on this. And now if I rewind and play, I have this nice oscillating animation. Now the problem with this is that it's very linear. There's no randomness in this. So what can I do? Well, some of you may think that if I turn off this and select the cloner, and instead of a plane effector, I use a random effector with the same exact parameters. So let's go parameter 0, 100, and 0. Let's go to fall off. Let's go linear. Let's make this plus x. And let's make this 100. Now, if I move the random effect, I'm going to get the same effect. No, I won't. Number one, I need to go to the random effector and set the minimum value to zero. Let's see if it works now. And again, it doesn't. And the reason is that at 100% fall off, that's when all the values are 100% randomized. So how do we make this work? We're well, obviously not like this, so let's remove this random effector. I'm going to turn this back on. Here is where the technique of weight transformation comes into play. If you're wondering what weights are, you go to the cloner, transform, display, weight, and you see these dots where red is 0 and yellow is 100%. For now, forget I just did this. I just want to show you where the weights are visible. And weights are nothing more than a parameter that can have a value of 0 to 1, which is assigned to every single one of your clones and can be used under certain circumstances. One of these circumstances we're dealing with today. So for now, I'm going to turn it back off. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to select the cloner and create a random effector yet again. Excellent. Go to your random effector and turn off all parameters. Turn up the weight transform. Then in your cloner, go to the effectors list and make sure that the random effector is above the effectors or effector you want to affect. So the random effector affects everything underneath it and nothing above it if anything is there. Fantastic. Next, we need to go to the plane effector, which is the affected effector. Go to the fall off tab and remove any weighting. So you need to go here and zero out the weighting. And lastly, go to the random effector once again, go to the effector tab and make the minimum value zero. I'm going to repeat these at the end. So here's my plane effector. And now you can see that we get the effect we want from zero to 100% but in a more random manner. Now here's one of the things you will notice, that although we're outside the influence of our fall off, you can see that they don't all reach 100%. Now the reason is the following. I'm going to open up a new scene and show you why this happens. The way the weight transform works is the following. So in this very simple setup, I have three cloners 
that have one cube each, and three plane effectors. Plane effector one affects this one, two affects this one, and three affects that one. If you want to see it in action, there you go. One, two, and three, you believe me. Now, if I select all three and move them in unison, then this is what happens. All the cubes move at the same time. What the weight transform actually does, it moves the fall off a bit forwards or a bit backwards. So if I take this plane effect and move it somewhere here, then take the third one and move it further back. If I select all three, now if I move them, you will see that the cubes are going to move at different times. And this is exactly what the weight transform does. It offsets the fall off either towards the front or towards the back to change the timing while retaining the speed. This has the side effect that your overall distance becomes bigger. That's why you get those overshoots. So all you have to do is compensate for this larger distance. So back in our file, go here, move this so that all your cubes are up, and just go to the coordinates and re-establish the keyframe. Make sure that it's the same on the other side, and there you have it you got this randomness, although you are retaining the absolute perfect motion of each and every one cube. Now, in the case that you want this effect to be a bit less than it is, all you have to do is go to the random effector, and you can do one of the following. Either you go to the effector and you change the maximum value, so now we have a smaller effect of randomization, or, let's make this 100% again, you can go to the parameter and change the weight transform value. So I can make this a bit less, and now we have this slight randomness. Or you can maximize this, and you can go to the fall off and change this weight. Make this less, and again. So either of those three will produce the same minimized amount of randomness. Let's make this back 100%. And finally, the other thing you can do is use the random effectors fall off. Instead of infinite, you can create something like a sphere. And this means the weight randomization will happen only within the bounds of your fall off shape. Finally, and this has nothing to do with the actual tutorial, you can always go and add a delay effector in spring mode and make it something like 83%, 84%, and you get this nice little bounciness added on top. So, there you have it. You know how to add some randomness to your otherwise linear animations just by adding a random effector using weight transform. And don't forget the four rules of weight transforming. Number one, the random effector needs to be above all the effectors it affects. Number two, the weighting effector needs to have all parameters off and the weight transform to 100%. Third, the effectors that are affected, it's good to have their fall off in the fall off tab weight set to 0%. And finally, don't forget to go to the random effector and set the minimum value to 0% from minus 100, which is the default for the random effector. Thanks for watching.